Welcome, I'm Jess Gomez from the Intermountain Medical Center Heart Institute, and I'm joined by Dr. David Mann, a cardiologist and researcher here with the Intermountain Medical Center Heart Institute. Thank you for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. We're gonna talk a little bit about some of the uh, studies and abstracts that you presented at the ACC 2018 in Orlando. Tell us a little bit about the PET CT scan study that you were involved with. Sure, so uh, as you may know, uh, we cardiology as a community has used myocardial perfusion imaging for over 30 years to help risk stratify patients. Mm -hmm. uh, patients, uh, as well as their caregivers, are keenly interested to know whether or not their symptoms may be related to heart disease. And so we use different tools to identify low-risk patients, medium-risk patients, and high-risk patients. Uh, spec, SPECT imaging has been used over 30 years and has been a mainstay for cardiology uh, during that time period to help risk stratify patients. Mm -hmm. PET-CT has come about uh, more recently uh, and has shown that it is more sensitive than SPECT to identify patients' risk, mm -hmm. but hasn't gotten widespread adoption. In 2014, Intermountain Medical Center underwent a change where we switched from a SPECT-based program to a PET-CT-based program. Uh, and we as researchers were interested to see whether or not we were better than previously in risk stratifying these patients. And so we looked at patients we studied with SPECT uh, during a time period and then PET afterwards when we switched over. And what we found was that PET was indeed better at identifying higher risk patients. Uh, and similarly, it was good at identifying patients who wouldn't benefit from coronary revascularization or wouldn't need invasive angiography. And so PET was better at identifying true positives uh, for patients with heart disease, as well as decreasing the false positives. Uh, there's a lot left to be done, obviously, mm -hmm. but I think this is interesting and it may have broad implications for the cardiovascular community as we look at providing better evidence-based care in a cost-efficient manner. What was the main difference between SPECT and PET in terms of the quality of images or the differentiation that allowed you to find that it was a, a more sensitive and perhaps a better diagnostic tool? Well, uh, PET in general has increased sensitivity and specificity uh, for a number of different uh, reasons. Most importantly, probably the image resolution and the quality of the uh, perfusion scans that we get on patients. And so it more consistently gives us a higher quality image that we can more accurately assess a patient's risk. And, and what were the significance of the findings in terms of, was it overwhelming? Was it uh, in terms of the better quality and the better imaging from a PET over SPEC? Sure, so I think the significance is that uh, we better identified those patients uh, who are at higher risk that would benefit from invasive therapy leading to possibly coronary stenting versus uh, open heart surgery. Uh, and so the hope is that as we dive into this into more detail that we'll be able to see whether or not an earlier invasive strategy mm -hmm. on these patients uh, makes a difference in long-term outcomes. And that's great. And so you'll you'll address that in future studies then? Uh, that's that's our hope, yes. Great. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Min, for being with us today. No, we happy appreciate to. it. And we thank you for joining us as well. We invite you to stop by the Intermont Medical Center Heart Institute booth in the exhibit hall to visit with Dr. Min and our other researchers to talk about collaborative efforts to promote your research and to uh, move and advance the scientific knowledge of heart disease even further. Thank you so much for joining us and have a good day.